Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. Today we're going to be talking about availability sets on Microsoft Azure and how you can use these to create highly available applications running on Microsoft Azure. Last time we looked at virtual machine scale sets on Microsoft Azure, and we saw that you can use virtual machine scale sets to create uh, highly available applications on Microsoft Azure. And the way that worked is you start off with a base image, and then you can create any number of virtual machines that are practically identical to one another. You can scale those up and scale those down with very little consequence to the set of virtual machines. Now, it's not always the case that you can have a set of virtual machines that are all identical to one another and still having a highly available application. Sometimes you you need those virtual machines to be highly available, but they're not all identical to one another. And this would be the case for something like a database cluster where you might have a master node configuration and the availability of that virtual machine set is uh, something that you need to set up in a way that is highly availability on the underlying infrastructure. And this is where availability sets come in. And the way that Microsoft does this is it creates two things on that availability set for you. It creates fault domains and update domains. Now, with your availability set, when you create it, you assign your virtual machines to that availability set, and that availability set uh, has several fault domains that are assigned to it. Now, a fault domain is essentially a rack in a Microsoft data center. And that rack has independent networking and independent power from all of the other racks or other fault domains in that Microsoft data center. And what Microsoft is going to do in that case is take the virtual machines and your availability set and distribute those across more than one fault domain. So in the event of a rack failing, it doesn't bring down your application in its entirety. So essentially what you end up with is your, your virtual machines, your master node, and your worker nodes distributed evenly as possible across the fault domains that are a part of your availability set. Similar to that is an update domain. Now an update domain is essentially the a logical grouping of virtual machines. So in your availability set, you say I want three uh, update domains. So what this does is it uh, distributes your virtual machines across those update domains so that when the underlying infrastructure on Azure goes uh, to be patched, it doesn't take down your entire application. Uh, it will take down one update domain, patch that update, dom update domain, reboot the virtual machines, and then bring them back up without disrupting all the other update domains that are assigned to your availability uh, uh, set as well. So this uh, uh, update domain combined with the fault domain com creates a set of of technologies that can provide high availability to your applications that are running on Microsoft Azure. So when you set your virtual machines up in your cluster configuration, whatever it might be, make sure that you, you select a, a, an appropriate number of fault domains and appropriate number of availability update domains in your availability set. I'm here in the Azure portal in an empty resource group I've named availability set. You can name that whatever you want, but I, I just called it that for this demo. Now I'm going to create a virtual machine in this uh, resource group and I'm going to just select a resource manager for the deployment option and then I'm going to choose a name for it called a VM1. Now on this tab when I'm creating a virtual machine I can change the virtual machine size which we've already seen. I'm going to select a B1LS because I don't really need a large virtual machine for this demo and uh, I can punch in a username for it. Please. Now that I have my password in there, I can come down here and take the defaults on the ports. However, it is on this uh, tab here that I want to select availability set. Now we're going to look at availability zones in another video, but availability sets gives me the ability to create a new availability set here and when I create my virtual machine. Now notice here on this availability set, I'm going to call it uh, AV 
set one, I can select the number of fault domains and update domains. And as we said, this is the physical uh, network and power source for this uh, set of virtual machines. And this is the actual uh, number of update domains that we can have behind the scenes. And it defaulted to two and five, which is the default values. So we can take the defaults on this. Uh, if you had a larger number of virtual machines, you could have more fault domains and more update domains to make your application more distributed across um, Azure's infrastructure. Now with that, I'm going to create uh, create that availability set and click OK. Now I can just pretty much take the defaults on the rest of this stuff because I've already created my uh, availability set by creating my uh, virtual machine on that basic tab. And once I have this created, I can click create and then come back and I'll come back when, when this is done deploying. Now that my virtual machine is done deploying, I'm going to click over here and go to my resource. Now in the, now this is my virtual machine here and it's part of a virtual machine, uh, availability set. Now, um, if I come down here to availability set and I can select this, it's going to show me which one it's a member of. So if I click on this, I can go over here and look at the, the virtual machines that are part of my virtual machine availability set here. So I have just a single virtual machine here so I can now go create a new virtual machine inside of my resource group if I want to. So let's go back to resource group and then click on my availability set resource group and I can go add another virtual machine to this and uh, call it um, a VM2 I suppose and uh, we can just take the defaults for this uh, virtual machine and uh, pretty much just make it identical to the other one or I can make it different. In fact, I can choose a different operating system I want to or any number of things for it. But when I'm going to deploy this virtual machine, I can come down here and select my availability set that I've actually already um, deployed the other one too. So now by having this virtual machine as part of the availability set, this virtual machine will get deployed to a different fault domain than the original virtual machine that I originally created. So that in the event of power failure on Azure, this one would be available and maybe the other one might be down or the other one is being patched. This one might be available while the other one's patching and then they would swap roles and it would upgrade the under upgrade the underlying infrastructure for this virtual machine and take it down while the other original virtual machine is available. So you can see how this is very easy to configure availability sets on Microsoft Azure. Well, this wraps up our video for today on availability sets. Next time we're gonna look at availability zones and how you can use availability zones for creating even more highly available options on Microsoft Azure. So until next time, thanks for watching Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.